What's up everybody D-Man back welcome to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing another Monarch Legacy of Monsters season 2 predictions video that's right guys it's Monarch time and in today's video we're actually going to be talking a whole lot less about Monarch and a whole lot more about the big baddies of the season <laughs> I mean they were sort of the big baddies of the season we know they're the bad guys they might not be the bad guys but we we know what they're up to in this video we're going to be talking a lot more about Apex Cyber how they're gonna play into season two. I'm gonna talk about some ways to get some really cool characters from the films into Legacy of Monsters. Fingers crossed, man. Oh man, we need some of these characters to show up. And I'm also gonna talk about the way that Apex relates to Skull Island, what they're doing, where I think the season is headed, and how I think things could shape up, and also the development of the Mecha Godzilla. <laughs> So with all of that said, the first question I want to tackle is what created the Hollow Earth portals? I think that is going to be a huge theme of Season 2, figuring out what has created these portals. It was a central question for Season 1, and I think it'll become even bigger for Season 2, because Season 1 doesn't really get into the what, rather the where. It's like, where are these things? What exactly do they do? But not really what caused them, not why are they here? And I think Season 2 is going to spend a little more time on that. I think it could be a big thing, and I have a feeling if they tackle this topic, it will relate to the big bad of the show. In Kong Skull Island, we're told that the Hollow Earth events that exist on Skull Island are created by the Skull Crawlers. In Godzilla vs. Kong, we see that Godzilla himself is capable of creating new portals. I don't think Godzilla himself has created all of the portals that are on Earth. In Godzilla vs. Kong, we see there's a great many of them that exist. And in Monarch Legacy of Monsters, we see quite a few of those. I don't think Godzilla has created all those, and typically they seem to be created by Titans specifically. I think more portals will be closed because in Godzilla vs. Kong, Kong, we're only told that there's one active portal and that's the one in Antarctica so whatever's gonna happen in season two I think they're gonna close more portals I think it could be as a result of Duval closing portals in between that two-year time gap from where we last left off and where we wound up or it could be a result of now that our characters are back they can tell Apex what they've seen and Apex can start to close those portals I think they'll leave one open so that they can go back into Axis Monday to try and get Shaw out although I don't think they're gonna close all of them in this show I do think they're gonna close a couple more and then we got to tackle the question of what's gonna exactly happen if the portals erupt? What if you close too many? They say they're on the verge of another G-Day. Would Godzilla really let that happen? I mean, Godzilla's obviously going around the globe trying to pick off monsters that might be causing a problem. That's what we see him doing in the finale. He shows up in response to what he perceives to be a threat with gamma radiation at one of the portals. He shows up in the Ion Dragon, attacks him, and he kills it because he's not trying to start another G-Day. He's trying to stop it. So what exactly is gonna happen? I think that what we could see is that there's like a pressure valve and if you close too many portals it's gonna put too much pressure or too much gamma built up in one spot that a titan will be lured to it and that's why an emergence would happen i think that's what would happen I, i'm not entirely sure how that works but i don't think multiple monsters are gonna pop up over the globe it's not like what happens in king of the monsters and that's not even why the mass awakening started in fact the monsters in the mass awakening were the ones that were on the surface already not the ones that are within axis monday or the hollow earth hiroshi's work is so unfinished that we we barely understand what his plan was. He never explains in full, and so we still don't entirely know what his ideas were or what their consequences were going to be. All we know is that he wanted to prove the existence of Axis Mundi in the Hollow Earth, and he wanted to create a portal to the Hollow Earth, and so he woke up a Titan. We don't really know exactly what he was going to do once he created a portal or what he was hoping to prove, but I do think his mission's going to be left unfilled, and I do think he'll be trying to go for that in the new season, especially now that Keiko's back, and he's going to be like, okay, I knew it. I knew you guys were right. Now that I am aware for sure that you're right, let's explore this option further. And that leads into where Apex is going to come into all of this. And last we saw Apex, they have taken over an outpost on Skull Island. I think Apex is going to have a lot more to do in Season 2, and I think we're going to see that they have transformed Skull Island's ecosystem in some way, shape, or form. I think we're going to find out that they've been capturing Skullcrawler babies. Maybe as a result of this, more monsters are just free to grow up and live freely, where they're not being picked off by this invasive species. They're doing this in order to study the 
the Titan's movements, and then obviously we know later on they're trying to build a laser that can slice through a Titan, and that's what's implemented into Mechagodzilla. I don't know if Season 2 is going to get into the Mechagodzilla laser beaming straight through Skullcrawlers, although that would be exciting to see. I just don't think we're going to spend time on that stuff. I think Apex will have taken Hiroshi's Gamma Signaler, and they're going to take that technology and try and create a way to lure Godzilla around, which is what we see happen in Godzilla vs. Kong. Of course, in Godzilla vs. Kong, we're led to believe that Mechagodzilla's eye blinking works off of Orca technology inspired by the Orca from Godzilla King of the Monsters, but it doesn't make any other Titans respond to it. Godzilla's the only one who seems to respond to it, so I guess Legacy of Monsters could retcon that to say that rather than working on Orca technology like was the original thought, Mechagodzilla actually works around this Gamma technology, this Gamma signaler, and that's how they lure Godzilla around in GVK. We also see in Episode 7 that when May hacks into Apex's computer to view their experiments, they already have Monarch data, which suggests to me that Ren Sarazawa has already defected from Monarch to join them. Of course, in the Monster vs. Expanded canon, which is really loosey-goosey depending on if Legendary wants to pay attention to it or not, mostly it just comes down to the showrunners, the writers, the producers actually haven't read the Expanded material, and so they contradict it on accident, and Legendary doesn't know better to stop them. That's the unfortunate reality of it. If we see in Season 2 that they are trying to pull from that Expanded canon, we know that Ren Sarazawa originally wanted to follow in his father's footsteps, but found himself disillusioned with how Sarazawa spent so much time studying Godzilla that he became a neglectful father, and really the final straw was that Sarazawa took his own life to save Godzilla without even consulting his son, and that's when Ren realized that Godzilla needs to die. There can't be any more fathers taken by Godzilla. Godzilla's also a threat. He destroyed tons of things before. We see that in Legacy of Monsters. He's gotta go. And Mechagodzilla can still be in development for 10 years. We know in Godzilla vs. Kong that they started development of Mechagodzilla in 2014, and so really what it could have come down to is Ren saw that his father wasn't going to stop Godzilla from causing a G-Day level event. And so in return, he needed to step in with Apex and try and create a way to combat the Titans so that if another G-Day starts to happen, they can have something ready to defend humanity. But I do think Ren's already going to be with them. I don't know if he'll be in Season 2. I really hope so. I really hope we get to see some returning Apex faces for Season 2. I think the two must-gets for Season 2 would be Maya Simmons and Ren Sarazawa. Both of them would be great to see. First of all, Maya Simmons, just because she's such an integral part of Apex and Godzilla vs. Kong, and she's also kind of the face of the organization for us, the viewer. Well, Walt Simmons was the head of Apex and is the guy who ran it and was truly the face of Apex. He had a lot less screen time and a lot less to do in GVK. I think by using the Maya Simmons character, also Isa Gonzalez would probably be easier to get onto this show than Damian Bichir would be. That would be a lot of fun. And then for Ren Sarazawa, well, season one of Legacy of Monsters shot a lot in Japan already. Shun Ogori works in Japan already, so getting him for season two if you're shooting in Japan again would be very easy, I would think. You could just try and schedule a time when he can get there. I think that this would be super necessary, especially because we could finally, finally get to see the Sarazawas interact on screen together. It needs to happen. The fact that that didn't happen in the MonsterVerse already is so awkward and so problematic, it just shows that they didn't think through their decisions fully when they were committing to the cinematic universe. They didn't have a grand map like they should have. They killed off a character and then introduced his son without ever thinking of the possibility of having those two characters cross over. Having Ren and Ishida share screen time together would be incredible, and a season two for Monarch Legacy of Monsters set in a time period where they're both alive on opposite ends of the spectrum would be a great way to do that. You'd have these very conflicting ideologies. You've got the one who wants to defend humanity at all costs, regardless of what it does to the world, Ren Sarazawa, and then you've got Ishiro Sarazawa, who understands that sometimes people are going to get in the way and get stepped on, but it's all for the greater good and all towards building for a peaceful world where that doesn't happen, where Godzilla and humanity can coexist. That would be a great dynamic to play up in Season 2, even if it was only for one or two key moments. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. I really appreciate it. I love doing these Monarch videos. I love keeping the conversation going. I had such a good time with Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 1 that I want to keep the conversation going leading into Season 2. So if you have any thoughts, big questions, lingering questions from Season 1, unanswered questions, or theories leading into Season 2, theories about how Legacy of Monsters could relate to the movies, to the comics, to everything like that, please comment those down below. The next video is probably going to be the last one where I script everything out myself, and after that we're going to be moving into ones where I'm going to be answering your guys' questions and kind of a bit of a Q&A, going over your thoughts, your theories, everything like that. So please comment your thoughts and theories down below. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think, and I cannot wait to cover them in a future video. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.